Welcome to the Effortless Swimming Podcast. My guest today is Scott Harpham over from New Zealand. Welcome, Scott. Thanks very much uh, for having me, Brenton. It's awesome, awesome to be here. You emailed me uh, recently and told me about the improvement that you've made over the last couple of years with your swimming. So I wanted to get you on to, to talk about that because I think there's a lot of takeaways for anyone listening to this podcast who might be wanting to improve their own swimming, which I'm sure they are if they're listening to the podcast. So I thought it'd be good to get you on to talk about your story and what you've done over the last two years to uh, become a, a pretty handy swimmer by the by the look of things. So you said in your email that you started swimming around about two two years ago. How did that all come about for you? Yeah, cool. So uh, I made probably like a lot of people made uh, one of those, I won't say a midlife crisis, but wanted to set myself a bit of a challenge uh, and uh, decided to sign up for an Ironman. I'd always wanted to do an Ironman uh, in my life and thought, geez, I might as well dive in and, and have a crack. So I signed up uh, for the New Zealand Ironman in uh, March 2021, and I did that in January 2020. Uh, and so went to start swimming and then COVID suddenly hit and New Zealand went into lockdown. Uh, so that put the swimming on the back burner. And once we finally got out of that and pool started opening up, I uh, thought, geez, I've only got eight months to go. And, uh, you know, swimming a couple of lengths, I was starting to get fairly puffed. So I had to start putting a bit of work in. And it was probably about June, I think June 2020 was when I was able to basically get back into the pool for more than once a week, essentially. And you were around the two minute mark per hundred when you first started swimming. Did you swim as a kid or as a teenager? Did you have any background in it? No, no, not not at all. So I'm a, a country boy in New Zealand. So I mean, we we learned how to swim to survive basically. So we could go and play in a creek or play in the neighbor's pool. Um, and then the odd little bits and pieces around uh, generic school swimming lessons. So local country school had a, a, a very small short pool and you learned how to breathe and blow bubbles and swim one length of that um the closest i got to anything decent in terms of swimming was probably eight i think there was an eight week or nine week swim um squad i joined up with uh oh, probably when i was 10 years old um and that was twice twice a week otherwise other than that nothing good i've mm. been a been a rugby player all my life up until the last couple of years so it was lifting weights and and running not uh, not swimming and when you first got into it two years ago and then you started training more and more what was the progression like for you in terms of of your pace and how far you could swim without getting tired just from that consistency of swimming regularly yeah so that was it took uh that sort of first month was was fairly slow and, and hard going just because you start um well I, I certainly found you just freak out in the water as soon as you start getting tired you get um even more sloppier than you already are and you just find it hard and, un and uncomfortable but i made the call to um sort of connect with a local swim coach here and try and get at least a couple you know two sessions in and around work a week where he was sort of looking over uh, my shoulder and he meant you started i started to feel a little bit more comfortable in the water um I wouldn't say technique or anything like that improved, but just comfort and general fitness um, got me down uh, to probably around the sort of 145, 150 mark reasonably quickly over that first sort of two or three months. Um, and then the progression started getting sort of slower and slower after, after that. Um, but the comfort in the water started to improve and it was a case of you could you know i could i could go in and was happy enough to just plot away for a k non-stop type thing um, and anything more than that was tough yeah gotcha and was there any anything in particular that you were thinking about with your technique or was it just you're just working off uh, that muscle memory that you got swimming as a kid was there was there anything technically that you had sort of looked at on on youtube or, for, or, or from the coaches or was it all just getting there and swim? It was it was pretty well getting there and swim. So at that time, I was still uh, obviously still building uh, with the rest of my training for the Ironman, and I was sort of putting the complete trust in the, uh, in my coach's hands for the swimming and just saying, okay, we'll just get in the pool and, and whatever he prescribes is is what I'll do. Um, there were small elements of technique, but I guess I wasn't at the stage of being comfortable enough in the water to actually be able to think about it and try and figure out what I was doing with my hands or feet, or it was more a case of 
get to the other length without swallowing a whole lot of water and 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 repeat basically so it probably wasn't until oh, a good five or six months probably coming up to that sort of christmas period where i actually started to feel confident enough to go right there is a few little technique things that i can start to think of and then i started looking for youtube videos and all that sort of stuff yeah i think it's good because you can't steer a parked car so if you weren't swimming at all and you you know you're trying to work on your te- technique or maybe you're not comfortable enough you haven't got any, enough sort of swim fitness to be able to you know do enough laps to be able to sort of think about it so yes technique can certainly help in the beginning but yeah it's good to just get that consistency and, and get that swim fitness up because as you're doing a couple of sessions a week then you can really start to begin to think about technique how'd you first come across effortless swimming uh i was what was it? I'd probably I'd got to about November. So what are we? Where that's five five months worth of um, swimming with a coach, and then uh, I took three months off work. Basically, at that particular point to sort of start to lead into the Ironman. And so at that point in time, I was like, okay, I'm not doing these five o'clock starts to go and swim with um, thirteen and fourteen year old kids that are, are kicking my ass all the time. I'll I'll be able to do that, you know, later in the day um and do some things that i want to do and so it was about then that i was like okay i'm I'm starting to feel fit enough comfortable enough in the water and i feel like the biggest bang for my for my buck at the time um off you know three swims a week was to start incorporating a little bit of technique work in so i literally went to youtube and started looking at i went straight to the elite level swimmers and that's great to know what you know perfect looks like but then trying to replicate that was near on impossible and i had no idea of drills or anything like that so started looking around and and uh there was plenty of effortless swimming uh videos and little snippets that keep popping up and and the way you've i guess constructed the whole effortless swimming setup and those little videos was just awesome to be able to go okay here's you know one one or two little drills your ymca drill or even things as simple as um even just like blowing bubbles properly or being able to breathe into your diaphragm or thinking about reaching for the wall to get your sort of line and length all of that sort of stuff was was brilliant so once i found it started to put it into practice i was was hooked basically what were some of those things that you started with initially in in terms of changing your your stroke what did you what was one of the first things you implemented and you felt okay that made a difference i and hindsight's awesome. I should have started with the, uh, and once I actually joined the membership, you've got that eight-week faster freestyle, which is which is perfect. But I went straight to uh, all the stuff around the catch. So a couple of the drills were, I think the very first one I started to do was your, just your doggy paddle drill um, or uh, the YMCA drill or um, I think, do you call it uh as a kick catch where you just have one arm in that sort of catch position yeah, the, the catch kick drill where you're just yep. basically kicking on your side with your arm in a, in a catch position that's right yep yeah so it was it was pretty well all on around the catch because part of what i continued to hear you say was you know the the most propulsion or the the main phase of the the swim is that that catch through through your pull phase so um, if you can get that sort of sorted, then away you go. So I, I spent a lot of time leading into the Ironman, focusing purely on on that without thinking too much about it. And then I've progressed since then, obviously. That was more than a year ago. Yeah, yeah, nice. And uh, and and since then, what's your, your swimming feel like now compared to six or, or 12 months ago? Oh, uh, it is, it's chalk and cheese in terms of difference. I think the how relaxed i feel in the water um how buoyant i feel how a lot more sort of streamlined and just overall confidence really and then that as you swim as my swim fitness has just continued to build um that just breeds more and more confidence right and then you can relax more and more because you're not having to fight the whole time and um i would i i wish i'd got a, enough footage from right when i start or any footage from when i first started to uh to now just to see the difference it's 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 huge right i mean starting off at two minutes per hundred and getting down to being able to do a fairly decent 100 max or or a decent 400 time now is um 
I mean, that that sort of shows that the the confidence and the ability to actually swim is uh, is progressing quite well. Yeah, well, I mean, you said in your email that you were 540 for your 400 in January, down to 520 now. Yeah. This is mm-hmm. 400 meters, and your best 100 push time is, is is a 110. So that's that's quick. That's really quick, especially without much of a swimming background at all. So um, obviously doing doing something right there if you if you're swimming those times. I think most people be pretty be pretty happy to have uh, have those times. Um, what uh, with that eight week course was there? What did you take away from the the course that you've implemented into your swimming? Any sort of sort of philosophies or anything, any cues that have stuck with you going forwards? Yeah, the a, a couple, and it's a combination of the course and something that my uh, my old swim coach keep drilling into me, and I've heard you mention it plenty of times. But um, that constant reinforcement to uh, to relax is a big one um, for me because I find uh, the more I relax, the, the better I float, the better my position is, um, and the more I actually stop thinking too much. Um, so so I guess that sort of relaxation and there's a time and place to focus on the technical aspect of your swim, but then there's a time and place just to forget about it and just do the work and let your body fall into its natural um uh, sort of cadence or stroke rate or or rhythm and trust the process that any of the technique work that you do is just quietly in the background reinforcing the right motor pattern and that when you then just go and swim over time those start to quietly bed in and that's what gets you faster over time like there's no i'm not a massive well, i'm not a believer at all in any sort of overnight success you know it's I like the the saying, you know, an overnight success, thirty years in the making type type thing. It's just so, yeah. Re- relaxation was the big one, um, and then there's a time and place for technique, uh, and you can you focus in on that, and then there's a time and place just to forget about it, and then it's just about swimming. It's just about getting miles under the belt. Yeah, I mean, that's a great approach. The with what I talk about is the so it's a lot of technical stuff. And there is so many different things to think about in swimming. So it's very easy to fall into that trap of overthinking or yep. being too caught up in your head for an entire session. That's why I think it's good just in a warm up to have some technical focus and then keep it in the back of your mind when you're going about the main set. But yep. as you said, go, settle into that, that rhythm. And for me, if, when I'm training well, if I'm having a really good session, it's usually in, in, the, in the back of my mind, yeah, there's some, I might be thinking about my my catch or my timing, but it's more that I'm tuned into this rhythm of of my, of my kick and my hand yep. entry and how that sounds and how that that feels across my arms and then with the the rotation. So it, swimming is very much a, a feeling activity, mm-hmm. a feeling sport, um, rather than a um, than a, you know, rather than an intellectual one. So yep. what it should be at least. So if you can just let things go and then tune into it, you will you'll be able to relax a lot more with it rather than if, if you are thinking a lot about yeah, it. Yeah, so. agree, agree totally. And I think the one thing that I'm, and it's either a triathlete thing or it's an athlete thing in general or anyone trying to better themselves, you, I think we get too tied into to metrics. So constantly looking at the clock, constantly looking at how fast you're going. And I know if I've done a really good prep set with a bit of technique um, and a few drills that, that, uh, I, I put in from the effortless swimming program and then I've done those I've focused in if I, as soon as I start to worry about how fast I'm actually swimming my swimming just turns to custom because I'm I'm worried about effort rather than just relaxing and letting it flow that's as and you just mentioned it, it's those sessions where you almost completely zone out and you just you just quietly moving through the motion um, they're, the, they're the best swims and and you're spot on around Swimming is absolutely a feeling, and more effort does not equal <laughs> more speed. It uh, often is is the complete reverse, and that that's a big part of why I call the business effortless swimming. Is yes, you have to apply effort, obviously, but when you're swimming well, it feels effortless. You feel yep, relaxed, absolutely. and many many of the best races when I've asked elite swimmers or professional triathletes. You know, what, was, what was your best race? And how did it feel? Most of the time, it felt like it was pretty easy. Yeah. Yep. So if, if you can if you can achieve that, 
it's likely you're going to have a have a good race. And I've, I found a similar thing when I ever tried to swim with a with a swim watch, a Garmin. I'd be in the back of my mind. I'm thinking about, oh man, what's my time? What's my what's my pace yeah. here? Even if I could see it on the the stop clock on the wall when I'm when I'm turning, I'd still be worried about what pace I'm doing. So I, I didn't like it. So I, that's why I would never really swim with a, a watch. I don't mind the form goggles for it though, because I can see it on my turns and I can just sort of see what was my 50 split. Okay. That's where I'm at. I can just, so I find it a little bit different with that because I I can just tell whether I'm on, on track or not. And I, yep. I don't feel like I'm racing against right. Yeah. Racing against the clock in a way. So I, I do, I really like that about the, the form goggles, which is why, yeah, I'd, I'd use those over a, over a swim watch, but um, yeah. yeah, it's um, yeah, you, you're exactly right. It's uh, if we can just tune, tune many of the things out and just enjoy that feeling mm-hmm. of being in the water and, and being present there for me, that's when I have my, my best swims and, and I enjoy it the most as, as well. Yeah. yeah. That, that enjoyment factor is, is massive and you're spot on there when, when you can feel the water and you know, you're swimming well. I mean, every now and then glance at the clock and it'll tell you that you're swimming well just because you're, you're feeling fantastic. And that's quite a motivating thing. And the time just flies. I mean, you can peel off four or five Ks and it's and you're done. But the, the flip side's true too. If you start worrying about things, worrying about your watch, worrying about the clock, that four or five Ks will feel like forever. And you'll just you'll swim poor and you just don't get don't get it out of the session. But by all means, you, you're going to have bad sessions and you're going to have phenomenal sessions and most of them are going to fall somewhere in between. And I think it's important. You just you just have to accept that and know that tomorrow's another day. Turn up, go through the same process. Uh, and over time, over months, weeks, months and years, uh, you'll get better and better at whatever you do. If a person who was just starting to do triathlons and they're pretty new to the swim like you, what advice would you have for them with their swimming um i i think my advice would be don't be afraid at all or embarrassed or, or any of the feelings around starting from complete scratch and I, when i say that i mean start from blowing bubbles and learning how to float and relax in the water like, as, it might sound like that's what you do when you're a baby or when you're five or six years old and you first learn this but if you've not come up from a swim background that's the absolute fundamental to me it teaches you to relax and as soon as you start to relax then you're going to feel comfortable and confident and you'll enjoy it and then you can start to work your way in so if if i could start all over again if i even went back to june 2020 when we got out of of our lockdown over here and i get back in the pool uh that first month probably would have been spent blowing bubbles (laughs) yeah Yeah, it's uh yeah in like our core principle number one where it's breathe deep and relax some of those things are just hang floats where you're sort of just hanging there in the water. There's yep. sink downs where you're just dropping down, blowing out your bubbles and then coming back up. And mm-hmm. it might seem silly as an adult to, to do that stuff, or it might seem silly to hold onto the wall and, and blow your bubbles and then turn to the side and get your breath and come back. It might seem like it's beyond you, but if you're f- afraid of the water or there's something in the back of your mind saying, you know, this is not a safe place to be, you're going to be tense and you're going to be panicked and you'll be short of short of breath. And no matter yep. how good your, your your stroke is, there's still going to be that uh, element of I'm, I'm scared and yep. and you're going to swim that way. And you're going to tire quite quickly. So it's yep. it, yeah, start with start with the fundamentals and the basics. And, uh, you know, people what I I can't remember who said it to me, but, you know, a lot of times we're worried about how we're perceived by others. But mm-hmm. everyone's so concerned about themselves, they're rarely thinking about anyone else. Yeah. So no <laughs> one really cares what you're what you're doing. You know, it's um yeah, it's swimming we, probably we, even more so because they're worried about getting the next <laughs> the next breath. <laughs> yeah, ex- exactly right. So uh, yeah, don't worry what what other people are are thinking. And well, I've got we've got a beginner course that it's almost complete, but I still got to put a few final touches on it. Some of the the, the very first couple of things are just practicing your breathing, holding onto the wall. Yep. And a couple of those sink downs and, and stuff. And um, yeah, you, you know, even if you do spend a week or two on those, well, that might be the thing that will actually help you get to where you are in a you know, in six or, or 12 months time. So that's um, that's great advice, I think, is uh, yeah, don't it's, be afraid to practice the fundamentals. Absolutely. And it's one of those things like I've been thinking now and around when I do have some of those um, 
you know, there's a slightly longer warm up or a, t a real a real focus on technique for a particular swim or a particular warm up. I it starts to sort of go through my mind when I review that sort of session around. Okay, where am I at? What's the next thing? You know, how do I get faster and better? And I actually still keep coming back now to going. I'm not relaxed enough, or I'm not breathing quite deeply enough into the diaphragm. So I'm, I'm almost going actually instead of working on the next step of that eight week faster freestyle course of focusing on trying to get um, catch and kick timing really well, I might actually be better just to go back and, and re go through for a couple, it only might have to be a session or a couple of sessions, do a few sink downs, do a few deep breathing drills, um, do a few, a few drills of just floating there just to reemphasize and get that feeling back and sort of work my way through. I mean, it, it helps. I, we've talked about relaxation the whole time so far, and that gets your alignment better and you can get more streamlined and you don't get just puffed and you just swim a hell of a lot better. So it's one of those things, start with the fundamentals and don't be afraid to keep going back over and over and over because mm. you can't, you just can't repeat it enough. And the more I look at some of the analysis that you do with elite swimmers and you just see how horizontal they are in the water and how relaxed and effortless they are, I mean, that's a massive bang for your buck. You could have the best kick catch timing in the world and the strongest the strongest catch, but if you're still at a 45 degree angle, you ain't going to get that fast. Mm. Um, yeah, that's that's it. We see uh, the, they did a test at the race club, which is a, a coaching uh, company over in the States. They did a test just with the toes pointed down to the bottom mm. of the pool. So if you're not pointing your toes behind you, if they're pointing straight down. Yep. with both of them that's 41 percent more frontal drag compared with wow. your pointing your toes and that's just your feet so yeah. if you're talking about someone who's swimming with really low hips and legs yep. i don't know exactly what that might would be but it's going to be a lot more than 41 yep. percent more drag so it's uh that's getting that body position right is a is a massive one because it's that's the first sure. thing we've got to do is we've got to yeah. got to reduce drag so um often people think it's just the head position that impacts that but that's one factor but there's a lot of other factors that that go into it it can be how you're holding your your body that tautness through the the core squeezing your, your butt cheeks together a little bit tilting your hips a little bit as well can help keep it straight but it can also just be how you're breathing are you lifting your head or mm -hmm. are you uh have you're not maybe front quadrant which might be causing it as well there's a whole bunch of things and yep. that's why with the eight-week course we we don't we kind of cover it specifically with the balance but it's more just like over time you can start to bring it up if you get all those other things uh, right in the in the stroke. Yeah, absolutely. And like I, I still know. I mean, I'm leading into another Ironman coming up in uh, in a month or so's time, and it's too cold over here in New Zealand, and I don't have a, a open water set up around me, so I have to chuck the wetsuit on and sweat like hell in the uh, indoor heated <laughs> swimming pool. But yeah. um, the thing that goes through my mind straight away when I jump in there is uh, the difference in because of the wetsuit obviously keeping your buoyant position from that to just swimming in normal togs um, or speedos. And so that straight away in my mind goes, I've got a lot more to work on in terms of body position that'll make me so much faster um, with almost little effort because the difference between being horizontal on the water in a wetsuit and then the wetsuit coming off and just being a little bit lower is massive. Yeah, um, yeah, that's right. It's a... I mean, it feels good in a wetsuit, even with the floaty shorts on, it's, yep. uh, it's a massive difference. I see, I train with some guys who wear them and under my breath, I'm like, God damn it. It's like, I just can't like <laughs> that extra little bit. I just can't, <laughs> it makes a difference. So I can't, uh, you know, sometimes I just can't quite uh, keep, keep up with them. And I, I blame that on the floaty shorts. Well, that's why, that's why. Yeah, it's not that you're <laughs> yeah. <there>. absolutely. <laughs> Ego intact. Um, yeah, well, that's, uh, I think that's, that's great advice about being uh, willing to go back to the fundamentals and, and take some time and do those at the pool. Forget what everyone else, else thinks. And yep. then just that consistency that you've, you've had two, three sessions a week over, over a period of time will help you get there. And we've got a podcast that'll be out by the time people are listening to this, but it's on the book called Atomic Habits. And mm -hmm. I've, I did a bit of a, a breakdown of some of the takeaways I learned from that book. But a big part of it is, if you set a goal, it's not necessarily about breaking down the goal. Like I want to be swinging a five minute 400 in six months time. So in 
three months time, I've got to be down to five, 10. A better approach to that is what are the, the habits or the daily things or the weekly things that you're going to do that will help you get there? And so it's maybe that is, okay, three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I'm going to be swimming. And three nights a week, I might do a bit of mobility work. And along with that, I'm focusing on one aspect or two aspects of my stroke in my warm up. So it's just what are those, yeah, habit, habits that will help help get me there and then just sticking to them. That's what's going to get you to the, the end goal. Yeah, 100% on that. Hey, consistency over time is is the key to, to any sort of personal growth or personal development that you want to do. And people underestimate um, just how important that is. And there's a couple of quotes that I quite like or, or little phrases. One is um, uh, short-term Long-term, long-term consistency will always trump short-term intensity. And then the other one's not really a quote. It's more of a uh, more of a philosophy, but it's in and around. Um, greatness is is uh, sort of wrapped up in day to day workman's clothes. Like there's nothing massively uh, out there about greatness. It's just every day getting up, doing the boring stuff over and over and over again that no one else wants wants to do. So if if you can commit three days a week to swimming, commit to three days a week to swimming focus on a couple of things, but the important part is commit to three days a week and do it for 365 days of the year or 52 weeks. And I, I'd guarantee that you'll be a hell of a lot better than when you started. And if you do that year two, year three, year four, you'll just, you'll naturally progress at a rate that is conducive to, to you personally. Mm-hmm. Not everyone will go super fast. Not everyone will go super slow. Sometimes you spend five months making no improvement. And then in one month, you might go from a 540, 400 down to a 520. But you wouldn't do that without the five months worth of just chipping away. That's uh, that's a great place to leave it, I think, Scott. I uh, yeah appreciate you jumping on the podcast and sharing your journey over the last couple of years with your swimming. And as I said, you're swimming really, really well and looking forward to Thank seeing... You. What happens in the next six 12 months and onwards from there and you've got cans i man coming up in june and i'll see you up at a, a noosa clinic as well there too which will be which will be great so uh yeah thanks again for jumping on the podcast and sharing your story if, if, is there any of your socials that uh, people can follow you on and, and see how you go at uh, at cans yeah cool Thank, thanks brenda it's been uh it's been awesome jumping on this and being part of the effortless swimming uh program too um, in terms of if anyone wants to, to follow along, uh, my Instagram is just at Scott Harpham, uh, pretty boring and, and plain. Um, that's pretty well where I do. That's the only real social media uh, thing that I, I post. That's linked through to a, a Facebook page too, but your best bet would be just at, at Scott Harpham. And every now and then you'll get a, a snapshot of, uh, of me swimming or biking or running and hopefully doing something all right over in Keynes in a month or so's time. Sounds good. Thanks very much, Scott. Awesome. Thanks so much for that.